Hey everybody, it's Panos here from Life With Your Dog podcast. Thanks for joining us once again. Um, we're in strange times at the moment and a little bit of uncertainty and we've got a little bit of a global angst. Um, I think that's what we look at on the media, but when it comes to one-on-one, when we're with our people and I'm seeing lots of my clients, I feel that we're, I guess, just not sure what's going on. So today we're going to be talking about the, the coronavirus. We're going to be talking about what does that mean about us and our dogs and what can we do, some protocols and things to think about, um, opportunity for discussion. So today, um, also, sorry, so the first thing we're going to talk about is if you are quarantined at home, if you just come from overseas or you, you're starting to get sick and you're quarantining yourself at home, um, let, and we're assuming now that you're not like debilitated and really sick, but you feel okay but you just want to stay away from people well then um first thing is that it's a good opportunity to further your training so you know you're going to be at home and you know you're not leaving the house you've got lots of stuff to do of course you can watch a lot of tv uh you know you could read your books and you can do catch up on life admin of what you want to do but one of those things especially if you listen to a dog tra- dog training podcast like ourselves is that you should be finding an opportunity to be doing some um, some training with your dog. So we say three to five minutes each session, three to five times a day of training is a great way to make time for your training. So three to five minutes is not a long time. Three to five times a day is not often at all. So you can space that out and you should be setting some goals. You should be going, all right, um, I'm, on the, I'm on the training journey. We can't do many things out and about around public, but you may want to be like for example, yesterday I saw a client and the dog doesn't know the bed command. So I showed them how to do the bed command, we get the food, we lure the dog onto the bed and we reward them. So, you know, that's in the teaching phase of a, of a new behavior. You can be drilling these behaviors and like, let's go with the bed command for now. So um, you've got the time to be at home and you want to strengthen your dog's bed, bed command. You get the food, you lure your dog onto the bed. If you don't know what luring is, You have the food in front of the dog's nose, you move your hand and your dog follows your hand. As soon as all four paws touch the bed, you say bed, yes, reward. So then from there, you would then, um, as soon as your dog has all four paws on the, on the bed, you give them, give the word bed, use the marker and reward. You stand up straight, you reward, you stand up straight, you reward, you take a step away, reward, then say, okay. And then let the dog come and follow your hand to get more food. So then let's just say that's the how you're going to teach it, right? And then from there you go like, cool, I've got seven days, 12 days, 14 days to be at home. Um, by the end of the 14 days, I'd like to be able to say bed, walk into the other room, be there for three minutes, come back, reward, release your dog. You know, that's one example of setting a goal is um, in regards to being inside your house. And you can do other things. Like let's say there's a few of you at home and you want to work on your recall. So you space yourselves out in, in, in the backyard. Someone's up over in the back of the yard. I'm going to be near the, the back door. And then we we start calling the dog to come back to each other. And then you can go, and then someone can start furthering on into the house where the dog can't see your gestures. You call the dog to come. Your dog comes back to you, reward them. You know, like the little games like that. So start thinking about what you can do. If you're going to be at home and you can't get out and about, there's plenty of things you can start working on with, with your dog's training. Um... If you're allowed to get out and about, and um, as long as you don't come in contact with other people, I, I guess, then keep your walks up. Don't make it an excuse that you don't walk your dog because if your dog's out of that routine and not getting that exercise, then we're gonna start having some, we may be developing some issues as well. So if you're working from home and you're not necessarily quarantined, like so I know in Sydney, we're not in lockdown. Um, people that have come, we've got friends that have come from overseas and they need to quarantine themselves for 14 days. So that's one thing compared to I've got other clients, I've got other friends that are working from home. So then all their work happens from home. So it's just another day, you just stay at home. So then if that's the case, well, number one thing is trying to get distracted by your dog. Don't find your dog going far out. You're not at home. This is a weird, I mean, you're not at work. This is a weird situation. Your dog's now begging for attention, barking and carrying on. Um, you still got work to be done. So a few ways to combat that is you want to keep up the consistency of what normally happens. Now, at my house, when I when we're out for the day, or even now when we're at home, my dogs are outside, they just hang out in the sun and they do their thing. So I can do my work because doing the podcast is part of my work and I don't 
my dogs don't really distract me or annoy me. But um, but you can see that just because I'm at home, they don't have to be um, inside with me. So keeping up the consistency of being outside or being in um, in their crate um, can help you get that work done. Also, if your dog isn't too bad, but you know we've been just been talking about the bed command, you can set up a bed right next to the table, the desk here. And then you have some treats up on the table here. You tell your dog to go into their bed. Depending on what level you are with the bed, my dogs will stay on the bed for like two hours until I, I can release them. Um, so like I don't have to reward my dogs and your dog may be the same. But if your dog's not sure about the bed command, um, have them up on their bed. And then intermittently, every like few minutes, you mark it and you reward it. And that could be distracting to you. I don't know how demanding your, your job is. So, you know, think about this and also be... Be realistic about what it is that you want your dog to, to do. So, um, and yeah, and if you do crate train your dog and you feel like your dog's a bit of a pain in the butt, because, and if you were to be out for the day at work, normally your dog would be in the yard or maybe cruising around your apartment. But at night time you crate train, you may want to do some random crate training during the day. You want to get your job done. Um, this is very important and keep the main thing the main thing. But on top of that, you want to have structure. So my, the way that I that I explain this to my clients is that you want to keep structure of what you do. Daily walks, daily training, you feed your dogs, etc., etc. You groom your dogs. Like those are the things that you do. You want to change routines so your dog doesn't wait for 6 a.m. in the morning to be like banging on the door thinking, you let me in now and this is when you feed me. Because if you feed every single day at the same time, your dog's now waiting for that, the time, the, the, the way that the sun's positioned in the sun, um, in the sky, they know that it's 6 a.m. They know that you're going to come and feed them and they have their own internal body clock as well. So the point here is that keep the structure of what you do, but change your routines up as much as you can. So now that you're going to be home for the next couple of weeks, instead of going for your 6.37 p.m. walk where you normally could do it, I want you to think about maybe for the time that you allocated as a break, can be a time to have a quick bite for lunch and then go out for the go out for your walk or have little breaks in between your jobs and you can do some um, extra training. So think about these things, really, really important um, to try to manage the time that you're gonna be home appropriately. And you know, someone that's had a little bit of experience with these things and think about, thinks about this most days, um, don't wait for a problem to arise to be like, oh my God, now I've been home for the last 14 days and my dog's been loving it, then I go back to work and your dog now suffers, suffers some sort of separation distress because you've been out of routine or you've been out of structure rather. So um, I think that's really important. Um, and something that at the moment I'm not quarantined or anything, I'm still going out like right after this, I'm gonna get dressed and get out to work. Um, still being careful, keeping my hygiene up, etc., and making sure that I'm not coming in, in contact with six people. But, um, but I always keep my routines different. Like, for example, yesterday my dog went for a walk at 8 a.m. And then there's other days where they go for walks at 8 p.m., 10 p.m., sometimes at 3 p.m. Like, my dogs don't know when they're going for a walk. Um, my dogs don't know when we're going to do a training session. My, my dogs don't know what's happening. And because of that, they keep themselves open and they wait for my command. They wait for my gesture. They don't wait for the certain happenings of what happened. Like, I, some people would come home... They put their keys down, they put their bag down, they come to the back door, put the lead on, boom, they're out. You do that every single day, what happens? Your dog now waits for those process of events. And then if that hap doesn't happen one day, then we start seeing distressed behavior, barking and carrying on. So it's really important. Um, something I got up in my notes there is that dog cannot contract COVID-19. So I think there's been a lot of talk um, on, um, on social media and what I've seen on the internet is that some people are freaking out and trying to rehome dogs or maybe euthanizing the dogs. Maybe that's extreme, maybe that's not happening, but dogs cannot contract this coronavirus. So it's very important uh, that we that we keep that into perspective. Um, and you know, this is a great opportunity if you are gonna be quarantined or if, if worse comes to worse in other um, countries like Italy and Spain that we're on lockdown or even America, you're on lockdown now. Like everyone's freaking out, like don't freak out. We've got massive amounts of entertainment we've got netflix or tv fox or whatever it is that you like to watch um you've got youtube and all of our social platforms so even though that will keep you entertained 
and you've got your dog that will keep you entertained. But read some books, do some meditation, you know, look up the Wim Hof technique and do, do the Wim Hof Iceman um, breathing technique. Get in, get in that, um, those, those cold showers, boost your immune system, learn how to breathe and you know, start doing some life admin. Get out there and, um, well, don't get out there, get in there and do some, do some inner work while, while you have the time to do it. You don't have the obligation to go out to that party or to that wedding or to, to work like you, you've got. You've got a great opportunity to have some self-reflection, spend some time with your family, do some exercise at home. Like, you know, this is a great time. You know, you've got your dog and you're obviously trying to improve your relationship and your connection with him. So, you know, set those goals and start working on it. You know, it's a time of angst and uncertainty. We all don't know what's going on. And I think that's what makes all of this really hard. And, um, you know, and it really does truly show how connected we are. You know, something that I thought of the other day and, it's not really dog training related at all, but you know, it's a thought and I'm gonna put it out there, is, you know, it's so surprising that a few people somewhere in China get sick with a certain virus and they can spread it around the world within three months. And the only way that you can spread this virus is through contact and through the breath that we share. And another further thought from there is that, okay, if we, sh if a few people in one part of the world can infect the whole world, potentially put us in a, in a state of global catastrophe. Well then, how is it that our mindset, the way that our emotions, the way that we treat each other, if I treat you like shit and then you treat the other person like shit and then before you know it, we're, we're, we're spreading negativity. This really does show how connected, how one we are. We are all literally connected and in three months, the whole world can share the same air um, directly and um, it just shows that, you know, like they say, the seven, seven, seven degrees of separation isn't that wrong, probably, you know. So, um, and other thoughts that I've had recently in the last couple of days is that, you know, we're all freaking out. If you turn that TV on, you're going to start tripping out. All you got to do is just watch a couple of minutes of TV and it's going to put you in a state of anxiety. So, you know, hang out with your dog, get out there, breathe some fresh air. Um, do some hill sprints with your dogs or you know as I said and I always say do some extra training so like for example um, Nookie um, my little Maltese Pomeranian were walking down the beach and um, she just ran up like she loves people and she was off the lead she ran up to a couple of people and they were patting her and I'm calling her to come now dog trainer's failure is that I called her to come two times and she didn't come back to me the third time she came that was great so that was a hole in my training because most times when I call her to come, she will come back to me. But the motivation of me calling her when she's already getting, hello, Hazzy, I'm on Instagram live and my, my, my main man, Hazzy, Hazzy G says, hi, I love your haircut. Thank you, bro. Um, so, um, yeah, so she's playing with people and she's getting the reward that she wants. She wants to get love from strangers. She's, she's a, a, a little love bird. So, I called her to come. She didn't want to come back to me because, you know, in that scenario, she won't, she won't get rewarded because I haven't rewarded her under those circumstances. So what I have been thinking about the last couple of days is that she ran up and said hi to somebody the other day. I called her to come now. They weren't really psyched. Like they weren't upset that, she, that she, like they didn't invite her to a space and they were patting her. When I called her to come, as soon as she came up to me, I gave my mark a bang, which is the word for the ball, and I threw the ball. So now, since that one moment of calling her to come and she came back to me and I rewarded her with that ball, where it's outside of routine, normally we are in the park or we're in a certain scenario where, the, where she knows she's going to get the ball. Where this time she didn't know she was going to get the ball, but I called her to come and she came because that's her command and she did it reflexively. And then I rewarded her there. Now, that's one example of what I'm going to be practicing. Now, I can't do that if I'm quarantined at home. I have to be out and about. But... Like, think about that. Think about the doorbell. Like, your dog reacts to the doorbell. Well, you've got two weeks to be at home. So get your doorbell. Get someone to press it or, you know, go out there and press the doorbell. Desensitize your dog to the doorbell. you probably drive your neighbors crazy. But I'm just using that as an example. Your dog could be scared of loud noises or, um, you know, what else can I think off the top of my head? Like, behavioral issues can be coming up. Like, for example, if it's, um, you know, your dog's scared of loud noises, so then make some loud noises you know like I'm just thinking outside the box here to be like you've got the time to now and there's no excuses to be training your dog get on top of it fold, flip the negative into a positive and find find the opportunities in, in, in these times now so um, 
Thanks for listening to another episode um, of our of Life with Your Dog podcast. Um, Instagram Live people, thank you for watching. And if there's any questions, at always you know come in contact with us, DM us, email us, put in the comments below. And hope you guys have an enjoyable time. Keep that immune system strong. It's our best form of survival. Um, be nice to your neighbours. Check in with the older people and you know anyone that needs help. Be there for them. Look after your number one yourself. Look after your family and of course look after your dog. So hope you guys are well and have a good day. Take care.